Hey, hi, Lisa Marie here. Happy Tuesday. Oh my gosh. I, I'm just so excited. There's so many people having weight loss surgery uh, in October. It's crazy, but it's so awesome because your journey is just now beginning. Mine was actually one year ago yesterday on October 9th. Ah, I can hardly believe it's been a year already. So a lot of things are happening. A lot of people are having surgery and I'm getting lots of questions about the clear liquid stage and how challenging it is prior to surgery. Well, let me tell you, after surgery, it is imperative, imperative, imperative. It's so important. You must, must, must do what your doctor tells you. Follow the plan that they lay out for you. They should send you home with something uh, written out or they'll email you or they'll give you a, a website or, or something that you can actually go to and refer to. But you must follow what your doctors told you. There's a reason they're doing this. So, back up a little bit. Clear liquids. What are clear liquids? And why is there a difference between a clear liquid and a full liquid? Well, full liquids aren't until week two after your surgery. Uh, but clear liquids are what you have an okay to do. And the way to remember the difference and to know a clear liquid is something you can read through. Mm -hmm. If you were to put something behind here or if this was in a bowl, you could actually read some paper underneath the bowl with a clear liquid. And why they consider G2 and vitamin water a clear liquid, I don't know because it's not super clear, but you can read through it. You, you can, you can read the label through it. So that's what makes sense. That's how I remember what it is. Okay, so the clear liquid stage after your surgery can be a little challenging because you they tell you, oh my gosh, you need to have at least 48 ounces to 64 ounces of liquid, right? And you're like, Hello, I can barely get this much liquid down, right? It's hard, it's super hard, but that's why they recommend that you're off of work for at least one to two or three weeks because you need to give your insides of your stomach and your body that time to heal. Plus, you need the practice, right? You need to learn this new habit and the only way you're gonna learn it is with practice. So, kind of have a couple of helpful hints that will help you. My doctor told me to sip one ounce, one ounce of liquid, to have about four ounces every hour. So if you're up 16 hours in a day, divide that by two, you're now having eight, eight ounce servings in that 16 hours, right? And that's what you want, eight times eight is 64. So you've had enough liquid in your body. The whole point, the whole point of the first week after surgery is hydration. You need to stay hydrated. That's why they give you the IV, because your body needs to have that hydration. The protein and the nutrients and all that stuff, hello, we're fat, right? We've got lots of storage of fat and nutrients. We can survive for that first week on just the liquids. Sorry, but we can. We have a lot of fat. I did a lot of fat. So if you have a little one ounce cup, this is awesome. If you have the little cup they give you in the hospital that has the lines, even better. If you don't have that, I'm sure you've got NyQuil or some kind of cough medicine that has this little cup, right? It's marked on there, that's what you want. And if you want fun, go get one of your shot glasses. However, a shot glass is two ounces and you need only one every five to 10 minutes. Okay, so don't, don't try to overdo it. Now, this one ounce, if you were to put this whole thing in your mouth, that should take about five swallows at least, maybe even six. If you can do it in four swallows, 
you might get that pain in your chest. You might get that feeling of stuff being constricted and it might actually hurt. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't drink like that. It's not good for you. Sip. Just a little tiny sip. I know it's going to be super hard. It's a hard habit to do, but you got to do it, especially the first few weeks and few months after surgery. You have to do it. So this little thing, hopefully you can see it. Hopefully I did it right. Oh, look, I did. I drew my clock backwards and my words backwards so that you could read them. So pretend you're going to follow the doctor's orders and you're gonna have one ounce of liquid every five minutes. Five to 10 minutes, but let's do five just because that's easier. So here, you're gonna have your first thing of liquids. That's one ounce, two ounce, three ounce, four ounce, five ounce, six ounce. You're gonna have eight ounces in 20 minutes. That's gonna leave you 15, 20 minutes to then have phone ring, sorry. You're gonna, that's gonna give you that 20 minutes to kind of have a break and take a breath and not have to watch the clock and not have to pay attention. So then what do you do? You're gonna pick a different beverage the next hour. And if you wanna only do it four ounces, cut it in half because you know what? Everybody's body is different, okay? You might only be able to do one ounce uh, you might only be able to do four ounces every hour, not eight ounces, and that's okay. Don't rush it. Don't try to keep up with somebody else. Don't try to listen to what somebody else has said, what they did and what worked for them. Please, 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 listen. you've got to learn to listen to your body, and this first couple of weeks after surgery is imperative. I'm telling you, it's so important. You have to learn to listen to your body, and if it's hurting, that means you're taking too big of a gulp, sip, drink, swallow, whatever. It's too big and or you're doing it too fast. If it hurts, it's too big, it's too fast. So stop it. Now, clear liquids, kind of what I, I said here. If you're gonna sip five, sip every five to 10 minutes, you're gonna have either four to eight ounces in an hour, again, Four ounces might be all you can do the first couple of days after surgery. So what? Don't rush it. You've got all day to drink your 64 ounces. As long as you keep on it, you'll be good. I promise, it'll work. Now, there's 24 hours in a day, right? Your doctor wants you to get at least seven hours of sleep, preferably eight, but at least seven. So what is that leaving you? That's leaving you 17 hours. 17 hours. Now, if you think about that, that means you're gonna have 17 opportunities to have some kind of beverage. Hello, that is not being deprived. That's called, woohoo, variety. You get to have variety. So, I wanted to share with you kind of what I did my first, my actual, my first whole week. I like variety, I get bored really easy with the same thing over and over. My surgery was in October and we had a few warm days but we also had some cold days. So this is what I did, this is what I learned to do. Every hour I had something different. So I had eight different things in a day. Kinda crazy. Now, first of all, broth. You can have bouillon cubes, and break it in half because you cannot eat two, you can't eat, six, drink, whatever, 16 ounces of liquid. You'll barely be able to get down the eight and it will be cold before you have the opportunity to have it. Oh, I wish I would have kept my other thing over here. So you are going to want to invest in some kind of insulated um, beverage container. For two things, if you're like me, I now can only drink very, very ice cold beverages or pretty warm beverages. About, I think it's like 135, 140 um, is my tongue thing. But this is what will help you. Imagine this has got your hot tea in here, decaffeinated. You've got your hot tea in here. You can pour your little ounce, sip, sip, get your, get your one down, 
set everything down. And when you want to have it again in five minutes, guess what? Because it's in here, it's still warm or hot and you don't have to like reheat it up every five minutes. That gets old really fast. I'm telling you because I did it. It gets old really fast. The other thing is um, what I've shown you before and it's over here too. Sorry, is my, this is called a candle warmer or coffee warmer and it's electric. It plugs in, you turn it on. This then, if you're going to drink out of a normal um, cup, don't do this. It, it gets really super hot. You don't want to do that. You want like a normal cup. Um, but you could put a little, um, what's that thing called? It's like a crock, uh, ramekin. You could put your hot beverage in the ramekin or a Pyrex or something like that and put it on here. And then it's going to keep it warm, a warm temperature for you too. If you don't have one of these, but I'm telling you, these two things are amazing. You really want to have that. See, each swallow takes, each ounce takes about four to five swallows to get down. Just how, it's just, it's just a new norm. It's your new norm. Okay, so soups and broths. Now, after you have your surgery, if you're traveling, like a lot of people I had, these are amazing and the best. But, again, this little cube is humongous. This is for 16 ounces. It's too big. You won't, you can't, you won't drink it. So I cut it in half and I only cook a half at a time. I really probably would now cut them in quarters because you're only going to sip about four ounces at a time. And then you're gonna be like, Oh, okay. I'm tired of something hot. I want something cold. I'm just about, that's what I did. So this little Nor package, the chicken is pretty good to me. The chicken's pretty good, but the beef, amazing. I love the love. I still love it. This beef is so good. I usually have at least one of these in my purse at all times because you never know if you're out somewhere, most places will give you a cup of hot water and not charge you. So you can at least have some broth that's good for you and good for your body. Now you can always get the canned broth. This is vegetable broth. But there's vegetable, there's beef, there's chicken, there's pork. There's all kinds of broths out there now. Again, this is a big can. You're not going to use all of it. it. I wouldn't even cook all of it. You just cook four ounces at a time because it's going to take you a while to sip that four ounces. Now, if you don't have any broth in the house, you don't have any bouillon cubes, but you've got some chicken noodle soup, if you promise to get a really good strainer or some cheesecloth or go find an old t-shirt of yours, your husband's, your kids, whatever, even one of those wife beater t-shirts, you know, that's kind of thin, you can heat up the chicken noodle soup, but you cannot have the noodles or the chicken. You cannot, you cannot. All you can have is the broth, okay? So you're probably saying, Lisa Marie, I don't get it. Why after the first week of surgery can I only have broth and liquids? Well, let me tell you, your stomach is healed. It's just went under trauma for Pete's sake. It just had major surgery. And if you had the sleeve like me, two thirds of it's been taken out and is gone, right? And if you had the bypass, hello, everything's been all moved around and bypassed. Your innards need to heal. And they will take at least six weeks to heal. And a lot of us, internally, your stomach is actually still healing for anywhere from 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. Months. So don't rush anything. Your body is your body. So here's the main reason why you must do liquids and stay on liquids at first. is because your tummy is trying to heal. And... When you put food in your stomach, it's got to do all of this. It's got to it's got to work those acids. It's got to do all of this stuff. Your doctor doesn't want that. 
He's just done his best skill on your tummy and you, and that tummy just needs to sit like this. Plus, it's swollen. It's really super swollen. So your tummy's really only this, you know, your tummy's like this big, but because it's so swollen, it's like this big. It's tiny. So really the best thing to give your stomach rest and healing is to just give it something to where it doesn't have to work. It can just rest. That's why you're doing clear liquids. Not because the doctor's mean and not because we all didn't do it. It, it. It's part of the healing process and you really, really, really must allow your stomach to rest. So don't go too fast. And if you're like me, I actually had to stick on the clear liquid thing for almost two weeks. My stomach just wasn't ready. And that's okay, that's okay. Now, if you go to three weeks or more and you still can't handle the next levels that are coming, mm, you should be in touch with your doctor for week one when that happens. I was, and they were like, don't worry about it. Just do it for another half a week and you'll be fine. And I was, so it's okay. Now, I, I already told you, the, the goal of your first week is just to stay hydrated. So what I did, I did a lot of broths, especially early in the morning and late at night. I did these different broths. There's also these things that is, um, it's like a stock broth in a container and you have to mix that with a lot more water and then just put it in a container, an airtight container or bottle of some sort and put it in the fridge when you're done. Then, I mean, anything sugar-free. And now that I just said that, when I very first had surgery, they gave us real whole, full apple juice. And I think it's because we needed that sugar, that um, sugar to have some kind of carb in it to help everything go like it should. I'm not sure. But after I got home, I didn't. I didn't use whole um, juices. Um, if I had a juice, I diluted it 50-50. I had 50% of the juice and at least 50% water, sometimes more. I just diluted it if I all I had was juice because I did have that a couple times. But you can do these flavored waters. This is a Propel. Um, you can do um, the G2s, the Powerade Zero, any of those things that don't have the extra sugar. Now, you notice G2 is colored. These little handy things that you can get, I got them at the Dollar Tree. You can get them at the Dollar Tree, you can get them at the 99 cent store. I think Walmart even has them, but they're usually over a dollar. Sometimes they're actually less, but these, even though they're not clear, they fall into this category because you can read through them. For me, personally, and my body and my taste, one of these is supposed to go in one of these size of, it's too strong for me. And it's way too sweet so I do it in my husband drinks the fizzy water I use his bottle and I it's like double the water with one packet that's just what I do for me so this was pretty much my main thing and then sugar-free jello hello sugar-free jello but remember your bites are only as big as your pinky nail not your thumbnail your pinky nail so if you take too big of a bite of the Jello, guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna hurt. It's not gonna go down well and it's gonna hurt because your stomach is all swollen and little. And I know it doesn't seem like it's very much to go down there, but believe me, it is and it hurts. Now the other cool thing is Jello makes, um, you know, the Jello that comes in the box where you make your own, the sugar-free Jello, you can actually put that in some warm water and sip that warm. So you're kind of getting a little desserty type flavor, but you're getting the, the liquids that you need for the hydration and it's not this type of solid form. You can totally heat up your Jello and make it a liquid. Um, if it's too strong, if anything is too strong for you, dilute it. Mix it with water so that you don't force your body to go into pain and have something you shouldn't have. Um, the other thing is, sorry to tell you this, but your taste buds will change after surgery. It will. And I learned why. You know why? Think about it. 
your stomach was like this. And see all this? Pretend these are your nerves around your stomach. All of these nerves are all connected. They're all matched up perfectly to who they belong to, right? Well, when you have your surgery and you're cut, this part goes away. Now they've stapled or sewed your stomach back together. Look what's happening. None of those nerves are attached to their partners anymore. They're just not. Some of them come back and, and touch where they're supposed to, but some of them do this. You know, they're connected, but they're wonky and they're all over the place. So our taste buds totally change. It's just part of it. It's just part of it. So if you're drinking water and your water hurts, if it hurts to go down and you're taking small sips and you're resting between them, then go try a different water. I'm telling you, go try a different water. I went through, I don't even know how many waters I went through. Finally found one that doesn't hurt going down and it's the Niagara. I tried um, Arrowhead. I tried Costco. I tried Ralph's. I, try, I tried them all. I really tried them all. My poor husband, he was a hunter. Um, but plain water, we all need plain water. If you can't drink plain water, then you can add these little thingies or go get you some stevia. Um, sorry about that. Uh, this one is called Sweet Leaf and it is my favorite, favorite, favorite root beer flavor and it is so good. It's so good. But after surgery, you're supposed to be staying away from sugars and sweeteners and I'm telling you, even this lemon one, you use this, you're gonna be like, Everything tastes super sweet. It's just crazy. Everything tastes super sweet. So try with one drop. You can always add more, but you can't take it away, and then you've just wasted some of your stuff. So don't do it. The other thing you can do is have tea. However, it needs to be decaffeinated. Caffeine-free tea right there. So there are all these amazing flavors out there. And who knows, maybe you'll get a new habit, um, like me, and you'll like teas instead of um, crazy coffee. But you have to stay away from caffeine for at least, um, really, at four to six weeks, but a must, must, must parameter is at least two weeks. But check with your doctor, because your doctor has a proven system with all of his patients and what's been working. Lisa Marie, why do I have to stay away from caffeine? I love my coffee and I can't live without it. Ah. Because your stomach is now a third of its size and coffee has acid. It's very high acidic in it. And with the caffeine, it's even more. So you put that in that little tiny pouch that A, is trying to heal, B, it's swollen, C, it's like, what the heck just happened to me? I, and it's trying to understand what's going on. And you put some kind of caffeine in it. A, it's going to have to do this. It's going to have to work. And what are we supposed to be doing for at least the first two weeks? Letting it rest and just sit there and not do anything. Right? Right. Trust me. Trust me. Um, and so water also for you you may not be able to drink it cold. You may only be able to drink it warm. So you drink tea. You have chamomile tea. That's the other thing. After surgery, you might have trouble sleeping. Sorry, but it happens. And it's because of the, um, the stuff they put you to sleep with. I can't, just lost what that's called. And the pain medicine. So both of those things can counter, kind of counteract with your body's natural ability to rest. Invest in some flavored chamomile tea. You can have it, it's not caffeinated, and it's good for you. So if you feel like, oh my gosh, but I heard all this, I gotta have 70, at least 60 to 70 grams of protein, and all I'm having is this liquid, I'm telling you, the first week, Quit stressing about it. Don't worry about it. You need to be hydrated. If you feel you have to have protein and stuff in there, you're getting headaches and things like that. I use Gene Pro 
You, you can use any of them, but it's just a lot and it'll make it kind of thick. And you wanna be able to see through it. So you're gonna have to put that scoop in probably 16 ounces of water. And if you do that, and you're only drinking four ounces, you're not getting your 30 grams of protein anyway. Sorry, do the math, you're not. Um, but if you feel like you're feeling down, you're going to be tired, you're going to be lethargic, your body needs to rest, and that's doctor's orders. You're supposed to be resting the first week anyway. So just, if you have to put it in something, put it in some of the broth, put it in the G2, um, put it in the flavored you know, things so that you can have that nutrient, but um, you really just need to focus on being hydrated for that first week and then into the second week. So there's the thing. Oh, so, oh my gosh, watching the clock, what do I do? Well, go get a timer. Hello, get a timer. Use your timer on your phone. Get a watch that has a timer. Or this cool gym boss is amazing because you can set it to go off every five minutes. And it, it can vibrate so only you know it's going off or it does this little tiny beep and nobody else even pays attention. Um, and I'm gonna do a review on that later too, but get a little sand timer, whatever. You just need a timer. Your whole reason for being off of work for about a week or two is to, to do this anyway. And you don't wanna have spent all that money and gone through all that pain and mess it up, right? I didn't, so I took that time. I did what the doctor said, and I was a clock watcher, and every five minutes, five to 10 minutes, I would do that, and then that's when I realized 20, 25 minutes later, I hadn't had anything. Um, I, I had to use the timer on my phone. Oh, me at first, absolutely no thirst mechanism whatsoever. I also didn't have a hunger mechanism. So you have to set a timer to, to get your body to start working like it should, and that's what I did. So sorry it was so long, but you can make variety. So your first hour, it's early, you're gonna have four to eight ounces of broth. Your second hour, you're gonna have plain water. Your third hour, you're gonna have some G2. Your fourth hour, you're gonna have some solid jello. Your fifth hour, you're gonna have some flavored tea. Your sixth hour, you're gonna go and have some vitamin water. Your seventh hour, you're gonna have, it's late, you're gonna have another little thing of broth. And then your eighth hour that you're gonna do, you're gonna have some nighttime tea that's warm again so that you can sleep. So mix it up, match it up, there's no rules. You do what your tummy needs and what sounds and feels good to you, okay? Ah, <sighs> that was a lot. Sorry about that. But there you have it. Clear liquids. You can read through them. And you need to be sipping, 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 sipping every five to ten minutes at, at least one ounce. And it's okay. It's okay. Some bodies can drink two ounces. That's okay. I'm telling you, don't worry. You haven't stretched out your tummy. Nothing's wrong. It's just maybe you have this much swelling instead of this much swelling. And that's okay. Everybody's body's different. Okay? Have a great rest of the day. And I've got another thing going off in my head. So I will um, be back at you to share week two, which are um, full liquids after surgery. Okay? Bye. Have a great day. Amy.